because we want to talk about should we go stick with fixed versus variable rates in our mortgages. And that's going to cost us a pretty penny, which whatever decision we make. Hi, Dahlia. Thanks for coming back. And it's wow. It's been a whirlwind last few months. And Bank of Canada is holding rates based on your expertise and guiding a lot of your clients in this mortgage space when it comes to financing their rental properties, their multifamilies. What are you seeing as potential uh, breadcrumbs for next year? Should we stick with fixed versus variable rates in our mortgages? And that's going to cost us a pretty penny, which whatever decision we make. Yeah, this is a critical point in the decision making in terms of whether to go fixed or variable. Here are the observations. The last announcement by the Bank of Canada is what the market dovish, right? So basically that was the first time they're talking about the possibility of a rate cut. However, they always leave the doors open for future increases because it's all based on the data. As the data comes, the bank goes, oh, it's moving in the right direction or no, it's not. And we're should we wait and see or should we do something about it? But this last meeting, the tone was a little different and that was, that is hopeful. Now, also the report, the CPI report, which just was released, does show that the inflation uh, is coming down. Like the core inflation measure that the Bank of Canada looks at is trending down and that's what they want to see right now. It's sitting at 2.95 and it's improved from where it was. And they want to eventually see it come down to two. Unemployment has ticked up. There are indicators that we are in a technical recession right now. So all of the indicators are showing that what the Bank of Canada did aggressively over these six months where the rates were climbing up like crazy is actually starting to work. There is a tone that, okay, there is a, a potential rate cut around the corner. How close it is what's not clear. But if you follow the bond market, it basically is an early indicator of the future rate direction. And the bond market started to slide down, basically telling us that there is an expectation that things will soften, the rates will soften. So the expectation right now is that the rates will start to improve or the Bank of Canada will start to cut sometime in 2024, mid to like Q2, Q3 of 2024. It's an expectation, right? And every data point that comes in can change or shift when that happens. But the good news is that all of the data points now are starting to show what the Bank of Canada wants to see. So that's uh, good news probably for a lot of people because everybody is tired. The pressure that's been created through this exercise of aggressive rate increases over a short time period. Yeah, I was actually just looking at the data from Bank of Canada and I saw one surprise, it's not surprising, but it's a little bit surprising, but as the inflation is going down, but then the growth in employment is shrinking and that's all showing it was from like a 3.3, 4.0, and then now it's dropped to 1.5% annualized rate. So that's showing the aggressive interest rate increases is also slow now it's Everyone's got to tighten their belts. Business has got to tighten their belts. That means cost-cutting measures. That means less positions out in the market, which is causing the squeeze, which is why you're saying it could be we're in a technical recession even right now because the data is like past. We're looking at the past and right now we're all facing that. So thank you for that, for those breadcrumbs and showing that maybe there could be rate cuts. And I'm glad that Bank of Canada did say, you said dovish. So dovish just in simple terms mean dovish means that they are so the tone previously was about the tightening now that tone has softened and there is a hint that there is a potential easing coming up so that's what i mean by this tone yeah so let's get into what you were talking about fixed versus variable um taking a step back i, I think just for viewers if we could explain quickly what fixed versus variable means because there's also two tiers on your variable and that gets really confusing. Essentially, a variable rate is a mortgage that uh, where the interest payment gets influenced by any rate increases. There are two flavors of those. There is something called an adjustable rate. So every time the Bank of Canada raises 
the rate, the payment goes up because the payment adjusts like the, that. The payment is priced based on uh, this base rate. So every time this goes up, that's an adjustable rate mortgage. Then, I, then there is another flavor of uh, variable rate mortgages that is actually called variable rate mortgages. I know that's confusing. So one is adjustable and the other one is called variable. A variable rate mortgage actually has a payment that stays static but beneath the surface as the Bank of Canada adjusts the rates. So give you an example. We've seen amortizations at 60 and 70 years for some clients, for clients who are holding variable rates because what happened is their payment stayed the same. The rate kept going up and in order for the payment to remain fixed, with more going towards interest, the life of the mortgage started to extend longer and longer. And this is where some amortizations turn to 60 and 70 years. Fixed rate is you get a mortgage, the payment doesn't change, nothing changes, regardless of what the Bank of Canada does. So for the duration of the term, if you take a five year term, you're protected for that five years. If you take a two year term, you're protected for the two year term. That, these are the key differences. Now, here's the thing. When you take a fixed rate mortgage, typically you're paying a higher rate because that is your insurance, quote unquote, to give you that peace of mind. If we look at the differential right now, Tracy, between five year fixed rate and five year variable rate, the best five-year fixed rate on the street is at 6.04, okay? You may get something a little cheaper than that sometimes because lenders sometimes go out with promotions to, to buy market share, but it's 6.04, okay, on a five-year fixed. Five years variable is at 6.40. So if you take the difference, that is less than 40 points different. So the question, is it worth your while? to pay 40 points difference between a fixed and a variable for the peace of mind it's going to give you over the next five years? And the answer right now is no, it's not. Because the expectation is that there will be a rate cut on the horizon sometime in 2024. And even if that rate cut shifts, let's say to September or later in the year, uh, the simulation is showing that you're better off uh, taking a variable right now. This is the time where variable is actually winning in terms of numbers over a five years fix, over a one year fix, over a two years fix. And that's numbers crunching. But I do have here a sheet we, where, where we run scenarios. Six months ago, the story was different. Okay. The story was different. It was Take a one-year fix so that we're not sure if there was going to be a cut, not a cut. The data wasn't coming in as consistent. So if you want to play it safe, take a one-year fix this way, or maybe a two-year fix this way, you're protecting yourself. And then when things start to improve, you're writing down that slide. You can pick a new term and write down that reduction slide. Right now, variable is winning. Having said that, I always say everybody's situation is different. Even if I sit here and say, oh, go variable, go fixed. Everybody's situation is different. And if, if you can't sleep at night, doesn't matter what I say here, then let's look at a one-year fixed or a two-year fixed. But the situation you don't want to be in is to go lock into a five-year fixed, knowing that something is going to happen soonish, not today, not tomorrow. During that five-year term, something is going to happen that will bring the rates down and then your payment will be locked up here and you'll be sitting hearing about the market improving and the payment will be locked here. And in order for you to benefit from a lower payment, you have to break it and that's going to be expensive. Oh yeah, I have a story for you. <laughs> this is when, to, okay, I'm going to date myself. I got into a fixed mortgage at that time and it was 5.69, which was amazing at that time. But then all of a sudden interest rates got cut like immediately because of the financial crisis. And I was locked in for 5.69 while mortgage interest rates were a lot lower. And in order to break it, it would cost me, I think, 30 to $40,000 to break that mortgage. And this was like a triplex. So obviously I was like, oh, all that cash I could have gotten. 
out the door and it would cost me even more. Yeah, definitely. That's why you are here, Dahlia, to help people to avoid that situation. Back then, I didn't even know you, Dahlia. So you could have helped me avoid that situation, (laughs) but you weren't around at that time. So I think this is a good segue. How do people find you? Okay, right now they're potentially in a situation of a going fixed versus variable, and they might have a rental property or two or many. And it's hard because every situation is quite unique. Yes. Info at streetwisemortgages.com. That's the email address. You can ask us questions through, reach out for a second opinion or to plan or to get guidance on rate. And then our website, streetwisemortgages.com. There is a contact form there that you can always use to connect with us. Great. Awesome. And you always seem to know the latest mortgage changes, the stress test rules, like even the latest mortgage charter changes. So that's, uh, yeah, thank God. <laughs> thank God that uh, your team knows all that and it can help navigate the very complex environment we're facing right now. Thank you, Dal. Yeah, this is very interesting. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video. See you soon.